Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExilAutomation.com. This is part 11 of our Coded UI video series. So in this part, we're going to talk about hand coding in Coded UI testing. So this part is going to be complete continuation of part 10. Since we are going to again further reduce the code which we did in part 10 to much smaller and much granular level. So let's flip back to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we discussed in part 10. So if you have not watched that video, please watch that video since this part is going to be fully depending upon that part. So what we did in the last part, let's recollect. So I just created these custom classes like custom color, custom UI Calci window for the window of our calculator. And then I created a custom UI item window for the button eight, right? But still, I can reduce this number of lines of code. And we also discussed the number of problems which we'll face if our code grows further. Consider that right now you have only added one, two, three, four, five, six buttons, right? And it has got a different windows and it has one calculator window as the parent of all these controls. But what if tomorrow, let's say your calculator has a scientific calculators and it has a arithmetic calculators and it, and it performs a lot of other features within your same calculator, then how you can cope up with all those options. So recording all those buttons is going to be very complex and even writing this kind of coding will also become very complex. So how to reduce those number of lines of code or how to reduce creating all these different types of classes into just one single class, right? So for doing that, I'm going to delete these codes right here, right? But just remember the relationship between each parent and the child controls because those are very, very important, right? So now what I'm going to do is, instead of creating a separate class for this UA item window or this UA calc Calci window, I'm going to write them within my custom caller itself. So basically what we're doing is we're creating an instance for the custom calculator window. So I'm also going to create a instance for the custom UI calculator window, but here just see the type of it. It's win window. So it's nothing but a win window class. So here I'm going to create a instance for win window. So let's create win window. So this is nothing but the calculator window is equal to new win window. Right. So if you press control dot, you can get the reference using Microsoft Visual Studio or testing tools dot UI testing dot win controls. All right. So the reference is there. And then we need to add the search property for this window. So for doing that, just type calci window dot search properties. So you can see there is a method or there's a property called search property. It's coming actually from property expression collection. And then let's add the win window dot property name dot. So let's see what is the property which we are using for this calculator window. We are using name and class name. So why don't we just copy these codes? Just press Alt and we can just copy this code. All right. And then let's come back here and I'm going to paste it right here. See, so easy. Great. So now I have identified the window of the calculator. So the next thing is I need to identify the custom UI item window. So what it does, it has a search property of control ID as 138. And again, what is its type? It's win window. So why don't we go ahead and create a win window here. So instance for win window. So it's something about win window. It's a UI item window is equal to new win window, right? So here we need to pass the parent for 
this win window so the parent is nothing but the calci window as we already know right great and let's pass its search properties so the search properties is nothing but win window dot property names dot control id that's what we saw there and the control id was i think is 138 that's great so double quotes 138 all right and then we'll create the actual button again for button who is the parent obviously this guy so so win button btn is equal to new win button and the parent is something about our new item window great and then we're going to do btn dot search properties of win button dot property names dot and what we use there let's go to the ui item window we use name for the search property so let's use the dot name and here i'm going to pass eight amazing right so do you think still it works i think so so the next thing is i'm going to click it so mouse of btn amazing so this code seems to be more like our selenium code if you remember in selenium if you have worked in selenium you should be knowing this because in selenium we first find the element using driver dot find element by dot id or name or class and like that and same thing we're doing here and also we perform the click operation in it so that's the exact same thing we're doing here right so let's call this method of course i think we have called it already in the code or UI test great so why don't we just run this hmm did you see that it just executed which is amazing see we, we have just removed all these dependencies right now so let's delete this guy i don't require them also this guy i don't require them so I just executed this code and it's still performing the operation, which is amazing. So it identified the calculator window and identified the UI item window and then we're passing it right here. So it's still working. So now if you want to write for a button nine or a button two, button three, so you can very easily write that. So I'm going to just copy paste this code to fill it like this mm -hmm. so this is 8 and then I'm going to change this guy to 9 I'm then going to call okay let's call this as button 8 so I'm going to click button 8 and this is going to be button 9 so this is going to be button add and this is going to be add so I know the property of the addition operation which we perform in the calculator so it's actually button uh, it's actually the property name is add so I'm just passing it there and it is button 9 so button 9 so btn add so this is going to be the add and then button 2 so let's call this guy as btn2 alright but still we need to perform the click operation there so why don't we just write this so mouse dot click of btn9 and then mouse dot click of btn add amazing and then mouse dot click of btn2 great so i'm just writing the same code which we are doing using uamap.designer.cs right same thing so i'm just going to copy this code and two more steps to go so button two and button three so this guy is going to be three and this guy is going to be three as well and this is btn result so i know the property name for the result this is nothing but if you go back to the uim after designer or cs you can see the result text box is result oh i'm sorry we need to click the equals right we're not going to click we just perform 
the 3 and then we're performing the equals so equals is the actual value I'm sorry so maybe it's btn equals so why don't I just put it right here equals and this guy is btn equals us amazing so why don't we just try to run this code and see how things works so I'm going to the code UI test and I'm going to just debug this test because this thing runs so fast and everything disappears in a fraction of a second. So the execution is the execution engine is loaded and you can see it's performing 8 plus 9. Okay, 89 plus 28. Oh my god, what is that? Hmm. Let me just stop this and let me go back to the code. Uh did I did a mistake? 8, 9. Mm, what is the mistake? Did it click the add? Okay, it clicked the add button, but still it is btn2 and the search property is 2. That's fine. Oh, okay. So the problem is uh, for button 2, I just performed the same operation. It's performing correct operation, but for button 3, I am not clicking the right one. Similarly, for button equals, I should search for button equals and then I should click that. All right. Sounds everything is correct. And is this add or what it is? So let me see what is the property for add. So let me go to the definition. Okay, the name is add. That's fine. So let me once again go back to the coreodivitas.cs. Uh, let me just debug and run this test right now. So now we should open the calculator. All right, it is clicking 89 and plus 23 and equals. Should click that. Good. So it just performed the operation whichever we are expecting. Amazing. So, did you see the delay which it happens for performing each and every operation? So, that's a kind of pain, right? Why is this delay happening? So, the delay is basically because of one of our culprit guy who is nothing but the instance for the window. If you see the instance of this control ID, it is 138. So, uh, let me open this calculator and let's go to the coda divide test wonder cs and use this coda divide test builder value of this control id so if you could see here it's 138 but that's fine if you see for this button it's 139 similarly for this button it's 93 and similarly for this button 2 it is 132 so for each and every button this ua item window control id changes but but here in the code, we are actually writing everything and we are working everything with just 138, but still it works. Right? Do you really think we still need this? I actually don't think so. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to call this calculator window directly here instead of UA item window. And if I execute this code right now, I hope the code will run fine than before. So now if I debug this test, let me close the previous calculator. All right, the calculator is opened. Did you see the number? It's pretty fast as the recorded code, right? So now the question comes is, why do we remove the hierarchy? So why do we really remove this hierarchy and why do we break this hierarchy but still how this code is actually working, right? So we'll talk about the hierarchy and how this hierarchy works even if the hierarchy has been broken in between, all those things, later video of this video series. So this is how you write the custom code for your code.dy test and you have completely reduced the number of lines of code from let's go back to the UI mapper designer it is around 
564 lines of code you have reduced this code to just 47 lines of code and still perform the same operation right we can still reduce this further by writing some of the custom controls or custom methods for these controls so those things we'll discuss in upcoming videos of this video series which will be very helpful while working with a larger code okay guys so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day